The Ultimate 433 was one of the most popular videos on my channel, and today we've got a V2. It's better than the previous one on the Winter Update, and this one is absolutely incredible. If you do like the tactics, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and do check out the Twitch. It's going to be on the screen and also in the description. But let's waste no more time and go ahead and see how good this tactic is. So we're going to kick things off with the powerhouse. I have included a very low standard team in this test as well, so don't you worry. But PSG absolutely run away with it. He's actually an invincible season from PSG, and back scoring 43 goals. We also went on penalties in the Champions League against AC Milan. We won the Coupe de France and the Trophy de Champion. Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi obviously being the star men of the show. And it was really, really uh, just a flawless season. I mean, we actually didn't have one loss. So, I mean, it literally is a flawless season without me over over exaggerate and go over the top but genuinely one of the best seasons I think we've had on this channel with a PSG side because obviously the invincible season can be quite hard to do as well but to partner that along with winning the Champions League the Coupe de France and the Trophy de Champion that is really really a great season and in terms of some of the league stats we'll have a little look the team stats you can see right now we've got most points per game most goals for most shots for at over 1,000 fewer shots against most dribbles made fewest conceded now I want to point out this is not really a possession tactic but I know a lot of you guys like to see how much possession we had and that is going to be 60 percent we also managed a 85 percent pass completion again it's not a tiki taka real base tactic it is a tactic that just wins games simple as that and in terms of the data hub it's going to look incredible for us as you can see 4.39 goals per game we've not seen over that four goal margin in quite some time 0.63 goals conceded per game and pass completion 85.94 which isn't actually a bad pass completion considering we're not really aiming for that at all but over four goals a game I feel like you guys have to try this tactic out. And we then go over to Borussia Dortmund, obviously second favourite over in the German division. And we turned us into first favourites because we won the Bundesliga quite comfortably over Bayern Munich. But the real impressive thing here is going to be this game against PSG, which we are actually going to watch um, in a second because it's an incredible game. And I want to see exactly what happened as it's a very dramatic 6-2 win in extra time, which means they must have collapsed big time. We also won the Pockel. Um, again, it might not be the biggest trophy in the world, but it is a, it is a German trophy. You can't argue that so the title the german trophy and also the champions league making that three trophies in one season we can't stop winning with this tactic and in terms of some of the team stats we're happily going to have a look we're looking at 2.62 goals or most points per game sorry most goals most shots for fewer shots against the pass completion actually not i think believe does it say anywhere on here is it going to say um it's not going to say that's not ideal but um can, can we open this up a little bit we can. There we go. So 84%, which isn't, uh, you know, it's not ridiculously high, but it doesn't really impact the results at all. And most possession sitting at 54%. We also have the most dribbles made at 697, most clean sheets, and also the fewest conceded sitting at 17. And in terms of the data hub, we are going to happily have a look. 2.88 goals per game, conceded at 0.5. So obviously the goals per game is going to be a little bit lower. We're playing in a tougher team, haven't got as good players going forward, but still practically three goals a game is really, really good for this division. And it just shows that, you know, whatever sort of team you are, you can easily get over that two and a half goal mark and still keep it way under a goal conceded. And we then go over to 20th place predictors, Bournemouth. And we have just blown the expectations out of the window. We finished in fifth place with Bournemouth in the first season. Dominic Solanke getting 30 goals in a season, which is absolutely incredible for him. Not the best display in the Cups, but again, I don't really care because it's an absolutely outrageous display in the Premier League. Obviously, you know, 20th place, we were predicted to obviously be right at the bottom, right in the red. And we've turned it around and got European football. In terms of some of the team stats, we might not make much of an appearance on any of them but as you can see we have got the most goals which obviously is what this tactic is all about it's about the goals 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 so although we haven't got a lot of stats going for us it doesn't really matter because you know when you are when you're finishing in fifth with Bournemouth you can't really complain and in terms of the data hub we're going to have a little look as well we're looking at over two goals a game just over a goal conceded a game this time but no shock there we've got a very poor defense and obviously literally media predicting us to be the worst team in the league so we're not too bothered about that at all pass completion very similar to the others but I just Wanted to, I wanted to show you this one because although the stats aren't that incredible, it does show that you can do this with any sort of standard of team. This is literally bottom of the pile Bournemouth. So trust me, it's worth a punt of whatever team you're rolling with. 
Got to show you this game. Although we did concede two, I'm not going to hide that from you guys. I want to see exactly what happened. Obviously, it is going to be an eight-goal thriller in the Champions League final. We did go one goal up with a great ball from Bellingham into Ademi, who goes past the keeper and tucks it away to make it 1-0 inside of 30 minutes. However, I do believe... Is it PSG bounce back right away? They do, literally a minute after, not even a minute after. Verratti into Golovin, a great little bit of play in the midfield, plays a wonder ball through, defense is asleep, and it's going to be a fantastic finish there. Um, So that ties the game up there. What happens next? Because this game is sort of unpredictable. We're going to take the lead again here. Are we? We are. Ademi wins it back, loses it and wins it back into Bellingham, into Brandt, who hits it right into the top left-hand corner to make it 2-1. And obviously, it must have been towards the end of the game where PSG find a way back into it, which it is. It is going to be around the 83rd minute. Vitinha picks it up in midfield, a great ball over the top into Neymar, and dodgy keeping. The keeper dives before the shot was even taken. Match engine, we've got a question at some times, but overall... Oh, we got a penalty. Okay, so the first goal is going to be a penalty to make it 3-2 in the 101st minute. And we somehow score three goals in the second half of extra time. As Maury finds Bellingham, hit a dodgy defender, and as Maury picks it up again, and he's actually going to hit it, and it goes through um, Donnarumma's legs, I believe that is, to make it 4-2. And we didn't stop there. We fancied a couple more. As Ryanson picks it up here, into Munier, into Bellingham. A little bit of pass and play here. Still drew Bellingham. Still drew... Oh, that is absolutely class from him. And Makoko tucks it in. A beautiful bit of play from Bellingham to literally create the goal, and Makoko finishes the job. We go again here, winning the ball back in our sort of defensive area, into Dahoud. Drives up the field into Mori. Great ball through into Makoko. One touch into the left-hand corner. You can't go wrong with that. You really can't. Well, that is one of the most dramatic finals I think I've actually possibly ever seen, in my opinion. Um, absolutely incredible stuff from him. Bellingham enjoying a really, really good game there. Um... What a game. I mean, we definitely deserve to win it. Look at the stats there against a very strong PSG side. So overall, we can't really complain. What a game that was. We are now going to break down the tactic for you guys. But if you are enjoying the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and do turn on notifications. Doing these three things helps the channel out massively. More than you can imagine. Even liking a video helps the video get found and pushes it in the algorithm. So any support is much appreciated. But that's enough waffling. Let's go ahead and talk tactics. So I've gone to the effort to make a normal one as an attacking one and a defender one. As always on this channel, you can more than welcome to have all three. You're going to be able to download this one from the FM Scout website. If you're a Patreon member or a Twitch sub, you can download all three. But don't worry if you're not, because you can copy all variants anyway. So I'm going to kick things off then with the Ultimate 433 V2. Now, this is definitely a little bit better than my previous one. It's sort of updated for the new match engine. So I would recommend giving it a shot. We're going to kick things off then with an attacker mentality. In possession, you want a fairly wide player of defense, shorter, a higher tempo, be more expressive, and also mixed crosses. Um, nothing too really much in detail there at all. In transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs, and also take short goal kicks. And out of possession, you want nice and simple, standard with a high press line of engagement. I did toy with having the lower line, but standard at the moment is working really well, so we've stuck with it. More often on the trigger press and also prevent the short goalkeeper distribution. This keeps the goalkeepers on the edge. They can't really do much with it and also get stuck in. That all helps with the press. Now, if you are picking up too many bookends, you can take this off and it does get rid of them, but just be warned, it does affect how the tactic plays. We're now going to go ahead and break down some of the player roles. So we're going to kick things off with, let's go striker to keeper today. An advanced sword on attack, on take more risks, dribble more, and shoot more often. Again, as the previous video, we're only going to read out the additional instructions because a lot of you guys have called me out for that, so I'll be sure I don't waste your time with that anymore. So they're going to be the three instructions that are additional for that role. We then have an inverted winger on the left-hand side on attack, on shoot more often and roam from position. On the right-hand side, an inside forward on support, on shoot more often and roam from position. We then go over to the free in midfield, the most important area of this tactic. The Metzala on attack, on dribble more and shoot less often. The box-to-box -box on shoot less often, get further forwards, move into channels, and also... That is it, actually. I was going to read up another one. Nearly messed up. And then we go over to the deep line playmaker who's on simply dribble more on support. We then go over to the wing backs, and they are very important. So the main difference is on the left hand side, he is told to take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards, and sit narrower. And on the right hand side, it's again, it is going to be on support. Um, or this was actually on support, that's on automatic. But this one is on take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, and stay wider. Now, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Can you guess why? What is the main difference? 
I thought you had a guess. So this is the main difference. Obviously, it's important that this one's told to stay wider because this inside forward is going to sort of play around here. So the fullback can overlap and it's vice versa on the other side. Now, if there's a question being asked, can you flip these? 100% you can flip them. So that is the answer to that. We then have two ball playing defenders on shoot less often and stay wider. Exactly the same for the other one. But this one on the left is actually also told to dribble more on the left hand side on defend. And then the sweeper keeper is a default, no instructions, simple, nice and easy on a supportive role. So the main thing about this tactic obviously is these three in midfield and the way that these fullbacks sort of vice versa, you can overlap on either side. So feel free, if you've got a better creative left back, do it for the left side, if that makes sense, vice versa. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and break down is going to be the attack and variant of this tactic. So as you can see, the mentality switches to very attacking. In possession, it's wide, player of defense, shorter, higher, run at defense, be more expressive, mixed crosses. In transition, you've got counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs and take short goal kicks. And out of possession, you've got the higher defensive line, the trigger presses on more often, still with the short goalkeeper distribution prevention, get stuck in, and obviously the high line, which I did mention, the real key to making this a little bit more in your face, a little bit more attacking. And then going over to the player roles, as you can see, it's gonna be exactly the same for the keeper, exactly the same for the right back, both for the center backs and the left back. We're then gonna go over to the midfield areas, and it actually does remain the same. Um, I believe we did have I'm going to read this out again because I might have changed one thing and I forgot, but it is going to be a box to box on support, on dribble more, shoot less, get further forwards, and also move into channels. I believe that is the same. There isn't real too many tweaks on here, apart from obviously the inside forward does go to attack, and obviously the in inverted winger also remains on attack. But to be honest, the main attack and changes are all done in the mentality and the team instructions for this one. No real, real big dramas. And then we're going to go over the defensive variant. The tactic you want to use if you are obviously trying to seal out a game, if you, you know, possibly you're going in against a really big team you're a little bit nervous definitely something you could try and replicate and, and sort of go in with the balance mentality comes in big time there in possession fairly wide player of defense still shorter higher tempo time waster set to frequently now if you are going into the game nil nil turn this off but if you are seeding out a game keep it on we're then going to go over to mixed crosses and that's going to be simple no more instructions at all for this tactic um especially on the defensive variant sorry and in transition we've got counter press counter slow the pace down again if it is nil nil untick this but if you are trying to seal out a game have it on distribute to the full backs and the center backs and take short goal kicks and out of possession the line returns to standard more often we've actually get and take we've sort of taken off to get stuck in on the defensive one because we just sort of want to soak up the pressure not lunge in too far and also prevent your goalkeeper distribution because it's important to still keep the press high up the field and now we're going to go over the player role so as you can see the defense is exactly the same obviously the wing back returns to um pretty much what they have always been both on automatic and support roles exactly the same the midfield again it does drop the Metzala actually goes to a support this time so a little bit of a difference then and the box to box does remain the same still getting further forwards because otherwise it's going to be a little bit stagnant you're not really going to get anywhere with your midfield and then both wingers actually do drop to a supportive role as you can see they are told to do exactly the same but pretty much they're just not told you know to to be as attacking they're not on the attacking duty and then the advanced forward remains the same on take more risks dribble more and shoot more often so that is going to be the ultimate 433 v2 broken down for you guys after multiple requests if there's any tactics that i've uploaded on this channel that you want to see a second version for one that works on the match engine please do leave a comment it helps out massively and if you have enjoyed today's video be sure to leave a like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one